Hi, we're going to talk about one more grammar thing before we close the grammar portion of our year. And that is complex sentences. If you think we've already talked about this stuff before, you're probably right. I just think it bears repeating and maybe you'll understand it more this time. So remember that a complex sentence is a sentence that contains at least one independent clause and one dependent clause. In case you don't remember what those words mean, let's go over that. An independent clause is a group of words with a subject and a predicate that can stand alone as a sentence. So like, I can go. I is the, um, can you see that? I is the subject and can go is the predicate. Um, a, the dependent clause is one that has a subject and a predicate, just like an independent clause, but also has a word that weakens it and makes it unable to stand on its own. So my example here, if I finish my homework. And so the word if weakens that clause and makes it so that it needs to lean on an independent clause. Um, so the word I is your subject, the word finish is your simple predicate. We went over that at the beginning of the year. I hope you remember. And so if I finish my homework is a dependent clause. If you put those two together, then you end up with a complex sentence. I can go if I finish my homework. Okay. Complex sentence has an independent clause and a dependent clause. Dependent just simply means that it depends on something else to be able to work. If you just say, if I finish my homework, then that begs the question, what? If I finish my homework, what? Okay. Um, dependent clauses can act like adverbs, adjectives, or nouns. In this case, if I finish my homework, acts like an adverb. So it's an adverb clause. It begins with a subordinating conjunction. Subordinating conjunctions are the weakening words that make uh, clauses dependent. So the word if is a subordinated conjunction. Um, and they tell when. They might give reasons or conditions. There are some other things that they can do. We'll see that in our meet. But um, if I finish my homework is a dependent clause acting like an adverb giving a condition under which I can go. Adjective clauses describe or modify nouns. So he's the guy who called you. They begin with relative adverbs or relative pronouns. Who called you? <coughs> Pardon me, that is an ugly cough. Who called you is an adjective clause modifying the word guy. Who is a relative pronoun. It acts as the weakening word, but it's also the subject of the clause, so it can be a little confusing. That's how I know I should not say whom. Since who is the subject of the dependent clause, it does not need the M on the end. <laughs> um, or they can begin with relative adverbs. Let's go to the part where we went before. The word where is a relative adverb. It begins the dependent clause where we went before. Obviously, if it's an adverb, it can't be the subject of the sentence or subject of the clause. So we is the subject of the clause, and went is the simple predicate of the clause. Where is your weakening word that shows that this is going to be a dependent clause? Um, noun clauses can be subjects, objects, and direct or indirect objects, predicate nouns, or objects of prepositions, just like nouns. Okay, so for example, what you see is my whiteboard. So what you see is the subject of a sentence, um, is is a linking verb, whiteboard is a predicate noun, renaming what you see. Got it? Direct objects. Choose whoever you want to be your partner. So all of this whole thing is um, the noun clause acting like a direct object. Direct object of the verb choose. Choose what? Choose whoever you want to be your partner. Now, how do I know that the words to be your partner are part of this dependent clause? The words to be your partner, 
okay? Describe this person, whoever you want. It describes that person. It doesn't go with the word shoes, so it has to go with this. Okay, gotcha. Um, indirect objects. I'll give what you said careful consideration. So what am I giving? I'm giving consideration. What am I giving consideration to? That's the indirect object, what you said. Okay. Predicate nouns. That is why I asked. So that is the subject of the sentence. Is is a linking verb. And why I asked is, an, is a dependent clause acting like the predicate noun of the sentence. Why is your weakening word? Now, yes, why can also be a question word, also known as an interrogative adverb. But in this case, it's in the middle of the sentence. This is not a question. So uh, it's the weakening word. And I is your subject, asked as your predicate of the dependent clause. That whole thing, why I, why I asked, is the predicate noun that renames that. Objects of prepositions, so they can act like objects of a preposition. Put the author's name with what he said. What do I put the author's name with? What he said. So what he said is the object of this preposition. We're linking, you're using the preposition with to put what he said with the rest of the sentence. That's what prepositions do, remember. Remember also, adverb clauses can appear in different places in sentences, and I put watch out for commas, okay? So if you're finished, you may go outside, or you may go outside if you're finished. Notice that if you put the dependent clause first, the adverb clause first, it needs a comma. If you put the adverb clause last, it does not need a comma. Pay attention to that. You might need to know that. Okay, and then adjective clauses should be right after the word they modify. So this one is wrong. The dog in the window that I want is barking. Now the reason it's wrong is because that I want in this sentence seems to be modifying the window. But I don't want a window, I want a dog. And so the way I would fix this, it might not be terribly easy, let's see. I wanna put that I want right after dog. I think I'll put in the window at the end. The dog that I want is barking in the window. That's where it's barking. That makes sense to me. Okay, so this review should help you as we go into our meat and into our final grammar assignment before we get into your writing assignment at the end of the quarter. So, happy working.